Welcome to the JA Careers and Communication Program. We're grateful that JA USA worked with us to allow us to make this three session program. You'll notice that we have taken elements from the retired legacy JA Career Success Program. We've added in some new topics from the JA It's My Job Program, and we folded in some local content as well. So we're really grateful for the teachers and the volunteers that helped us pilot this program, and we're grateful to JA USA for allowing us to get to use it. The heart of this program is really to challenge the students to think about soft skills that are not only going to help them in their future, but also today in high school as well. So we're going to look at three main soft skills, communication, problem solving, and teamwork and collaboration. And then the very final session, we're going to wrap it all up in talking about the process of getting a job and how these soft skills not just connect to getting it, but also to keeping a job and potentially getting promoted in the future. Um, and we actually get to do some mock interviews as well in that session. So this very first session is all about communication. And you're going to notice that we've got some small topics within this um, full session. So you'll see that as we go along. The very first thing you want to do as a JA volunteer is um, introduce yourself and take the time to share a little bit about your background, your career, your industry, your education pathway. Um, maybe think back to high school. It may have been not too long ago. It might have been a while ago. But, you know, think about did you have a part time job? Were you in any extracurriculars? Is there any way that you can provide some connections to that age level of students? To be successful with this specific um, um, session, you're going to want your guidebook. You're going to want the table tense that the students can just simply fold in half and put their names on so that you can start getting to know their names as you mill around um, and, and teach. And then there's also a bonus worksheet that's called Workplace Topics, where hopefully you might have some time for this, but um, we're not sure if you'll get to it either, but we've provided it just in case. To kick off this session, you are going to talk about communication and simply just ask the students what are some of the establishments they've recently been in and what are some of the common phrases they hear when they go into businesses. It might be, hi, how are you? How may I help you? Um, do you want fries with that, right? Depends upon the, the um, establishment that they're in. But get them thinking about some of those different phrases that they typically hear in a workplace setting. We, what we want to get the students to think about, challenge them to think about, <clears throat> is it's not just what we say that matters, but how we say it. Our tone, our body language, all of that plays into how we actually communicate and how people hear and experience what's being said. So we're going to do a quick little icebreaker to um, kick this session off. And what we encourage you to do is to do one example as a whole class and then split the students into groups of three and give them just a few minutes <clears throat> to come up with a phrase on their own to be able to, um, to showcase some additional examples. So you're going to say one common phrase or one phrase, and then you're going to say that same thing in three different ways and then communicate um, differently because of it, okay? You can use a common phrase that you have. You can use a phrase that you've know, known has been miscommunicated in the past. We gave an example um, that a student actually came up with, which was, um, we need to do the dishes, right? And so you can say that like, we need to do the dishes. We need to do the dishes. We get to do the dishes. Like the inflection of your voice and how you say that can communicate differently, whether or not you're excited about it, whether or not you're questioning the task, etc. cetera. Um, so use that one if you want, or use your own and then turn it over to the students and just literally give them 90 seconds. It does not need to take a long time but give them um, an opportunity to come up with a phrase. And then if they're working in groups of three, they can each share out um, how to say it in a different way, and hopefully you'll get to see some of that inflection. So again, depending on the time, um, allow each group to give their example quickly around the room or pick and choose a few if you're running short on time. What you're going to notice is that following that icebreaker in the guidebook, there is a conversation or some talking prompts about voice modulation as well as body language. So make sure to point that out. And then we're going to go into the topic of personal brand. 
this is really a key topic that we want to stress and keep coming back to in each of the three sessions. So we're going to introduce it here, but we want you to continue to come back to it because I think it's just so imperative and such a great connector for them to think about. So just like companies have a brand, we have a brand personally as well. And that's what we really want to get the students to think about. So I usually do this by either using logos that are on their shirt. I just have them stand up and are, I point out a couple of them. Maybe it's, you know, Nike or maybe it's, you know, whatever it might be. Um, but what are the first things that you think of when you hear that word? So what do you first think about when you hear Starbucks? You might hear positive things. You might hear negative things, right? And why? It's because of our personal experience with that. If we hear Starbucks, Nike, Coke versus Pepsi, um, all of those things are going to trigger something for us personally, right? Whether it's right or wrong, just like that. The way we behave, the way we communicate, the, be the way that we respond to situations and interact with others is going to build that brand for them. I always challenge the students to think about what is the first thing that either peers or teachers or a friend's parent thinks when you walk in the door? When you walk in that door, does your teacher think, ah, oh, yes, they participate, they're, you know, they're on time, they're a joy to work with, or do they think, ugh, they're always late, they're off task, they're the class clown, right? So you don't have to spend a ton of time on this, but introduce that topic and that concept. And as we're talking about these soft skills, help the students to understand that how they utilize these soft skills as they strengthen them, if it's a weakness of theirs, that is definitely going to affect their personal brand. So talk a little bit about personal brand, and then we're going to go into the conversation of conflict management. Conflict management, the way we handle conflict, definitely um, lends to what our personal brand is. So you can kind of fold that into there. But with conflict, conflict happens anytime, you know, there's a disagreement. And we can't always um, control what comes at us, but we do have control in how we respond. And that's what we really want to focus here. So we want to encourage the students to think about how they respond can either help dissolve that conflict or it might escalate that conflict. And that is um, really important for them to think about. And it sometimes can take a lot of self-control and a lot of like self-coaching to like take a step back and take a deep breath and really not respond out of anger or frustration or matching somebody who's maybe got an elevated frustration level um, coming at you. So talk a little bit about conflict management and um, ask the students maybe for some examples that they've encountered, or you can share some examples that you've encountered in the workplace as well, and how you've either responded in a, in a way that worked really well, or maybe you've got an experience or an example in which you wish you would have done it differently. Both of those can be very beneficial to the students. Then what we're going to do is we're going to transition. So we've been talking about verbal communication up to this point, and now we're going to transition into talking about cell phone usage and social media and some of the digital element of communication. So you kind of have to bridge this a little bit, but basically it's just saying, you know, so far we've talked about verbally, we could miscommunicate even verbally, depending on our tone and our body language, but even more, it is so important to be mindful that you can miscommunicate with electronics, um, sending texts, emails um, on social media, because you can't hear tone, you can't see body language, and it can really be easy to miscommunicate. And again, to kind of bridge this gap, if you have an example of that, or if you ask the students if they have an example of how they've miscommunicated via text or email, um, it's a really great way to segue into this digital element of communication as well. We are now going to talk about cell phone usage, and this is kind of a hot topic, and it's changed so much in the last 10 years. There's really not necessarily one right or wrong answer um, regarding how you should approach cell phone usage in the workplace, because every industry, every career is so different. What we really want to emphasize in junior achievement is to know the company policies and to make sure that you adhere to them, because there's always a reason why there's a policy. 
Um, you guys, I'm sure um, all being out in different industries, um, you're going to know from your own industry what your take on it is, but please think outside the box and consider other industries as well, because there's a lot of jobs that it's totally appropriate to um, have their cell phone out or utilize it on a break, etc. And there's others that it's like a safety issue in which you cannot have it out. And we're going to talk about both of those elements as we go through this section. We're not trying to say that cell phones are bad. We obviously know they're such a huge integral part of our lives. And as workplace settings have embraced the use of cell phones, we've really found that they can help with productivity along the way if it's utilized and if it's appropriate in those settings. So that's what we want to keep in mind. What you're going to do is just, first of all, just get them to think about their cell phone and just ask them, what is everything you can think of that we can do with a cell phone? And write a list on the board. Just have them throw them out, shout them out, write them on the board. When they kind of exhaust that list, pause for a moment and just ask them, okay, of these things, which do you think are appropriate to do or to utilize in a workplace setting? Circle those. And which ones are just straight up, like should not be utilized in a workplace setting? You can cross those off or um, uh, make an X through those. Help them to see that there are some things that can be really beneficial to use a cell phone on the workplace if it's the, if it's the right setting, right? And then what you're going to do is transition to what we call the do's or the don'ts or the etiquette. And honestly, every single one of these is gray. So we are not looking for a right or wrong answer. Rather, we are really looking for a great discussion. So that is your key point for this is the discussion. We actually want students on both sides because that's going to make your discussion so much more robust, okay? So all you're gonna do, we want the kids getting up, get them moving, get them kinesthetic, get some blood flowing, um, and simply just read through these. So the first one, keep your cell phone stored away or muted at work. If you think that you should do that, move to this side of the room. If you think it's not a big deal, um, you don't need to do that, go to that side of the room and then simply talk through them. We have provided some talking prompts, um, but again, your own perspective, the experiences your students have had, you might deviate and, and think of your own things to fold in as well, which is totally fine. You are going to notice that um, we have made two that are a little bit more robust. And so post on social media while at work. We're really hoping that you take just an extra few minutes to really dive into that and talk about social media and the cautions of it and how it's once it's out there, it's out there and how people have gotten fired from it, et cetera. So um, make sure you take a little bit of time to use those talking prompts to, to make that one a little bit more robust. And then the last one, sneak a peek at your phone. This is the one that's critical. So we're kind of ending with this here because first of all, when you sneak a peek at your phone, it's immediate, right? You could have a high emotion response. And sometimes that's why even schools don't want students to have their phones out because if something comes through, you know, they'd rather it come through the office and the counseling department than for a student to see it on their phone in isolation. That's just an example. Like, it's out there, right? When you see it, you own it. And if you don't have time to emotionally deal with that, how can that affect your experience? Um, but um, it really depends on your workplace policy. So as we said in the introduction, get them to think about the why. If people have a work policy about cell phones, more than likely there's a reason and to really think about what that why is and get them to think about that in some instances, it could really be a safety concern um, and it really could cause trouble if they, if they, um, if they do have their phones out, especially if they're on a construction site and there's safety issues, if they're working with little kids in a preschool or a daycare, a lot can happen in 30 seconds with 12 four-year-olds with glitter and glue, right? Like you never know, scissors, <laughs> that can can go turn bad quickly, right? Um, and so you just really want them to get to get, again, to think about the why, to think about being respectful about the policies and really to adhere to that. Because again, the way that you respond to those policies and, and what you do with that, it's going to reflect on your personal brand, your supervisors, your bosses, they're going to recognize that. And that could help or hinder um, your future um, in that position. We do have a bonus activity. If there is time, we have a great conversation about workplace topics. Again, we don't know exactly how long that conversation is going to be up to this point. So if you run out of time, no worries. If you have just a couple minutes and you wanna hand this out and introduce the topic, that's great. And if you just don't even get there, it's okay as well. But if you do have a few minutes, even if it's only three or five minutes, um, we'd encourage you to talk to the students about workplace topics. There are some topics that are just not a 
appropriate at all to bring up in the workplace. There's some that are better reserved for, you know, informal situations, talking with your friends or your family about um, versus um, the professional setting of, of a, a workplace. Um, if you do have time, um, you could introduce a few of these. I really would love for you to um, use the talking prompts in the guidebook to just kind of challenge your thinking of like, again, you can't always control what comes at you. So you might not bring up the topic, but what if somebody brings it up? How can you get out of that situation in a respectful manner? And so there's some talking prompts in there for the students on that, get them thinking about that. If there are the few minutes, just have them, you know, go through this and start just jotting down some ideas of how they think they would respond in these situations. If you have time, you can call on a couple students to share examples. Or what I really love to do is ask the students, which ones did you struggle with? And if there's some that they struggled with, use that as your launching pad, because um, it can be really beneficial to either hear from other peers and what they would say, or you can help give them some ideas of what to do in those sticky situations. I would really encourage you before you go into the classroom to um, work through these on your own and just kind of get a quick idea so that if they do want to brainstorm and they have time for that, you can do that. Make sure you take just a few minutes at the very end to wrap it all back up to um, emphasize again, just how we respond, how we communicate matters. And um, it's not just what we say, but it's how we say it as well. Thanks so much for teaching this session.